Tens of thousands of people have been surviving on pandemic unemployment assistance, or PUA, for months now. But imagine that lifeline getting yanked away unexpectedly and being told you owe it all back. Gina Mangieri is always investigating and found out why it's happening to many people across Hawaii. Some people desperately trying to make it financially through the pandemic reached out to KHON2's Action Line after getting letters telling them something was wrong with the PUA they'd been getting for months. When tourism came to a screeching halt due to COVID in early 2020, so did the only source of income for this Oahu resident who owned and operated a legal vacation rental in Waikiki. Unemployment insurance would not cover a self-run operation like hers. Once PUA was mentioned, I literally ran to do that. And, and immediately I got a response. So I was thinking, wow, thank goodness, you know, it, I'm, I'm so glad I did that. A couple hundred dollars a week, and for a while, the $600 federal plus-up kept her and her young family afloat. It was, it was great. It was perfect. It was like it was meant to be. Or meant not to be, according to the state, which recently rescinded her eligibility, and now her account says you owe more than $15,000. That, that just made my situation 10 times worse than if they would have just said no. She's far from alone. KHON2 heard from others, including rideshare drivers, being told to get off PUA, pay back tens of thousands of dollars, and refile for regular unemployment. This, despite the rideshare operators still waging battle with the state over their classification as an employer. I asked the labor director, what's going on? In the beginning, there was no matchup with unemployment insurance to see if they could have possibly filed a claim for unemployment insurance. And everyone just filed for PUA, and whoever filed, as long as they listed and self-certified, they were paid. And now that they've had more time to review each file, they're telling people, like Gina, for instance, that a rental is passive income not qualified for a pandemic safety net. We should all read the fine print or we're held account accountable. But I did. It's not just having someone long term where all I do is sit around and collect an income. I am actually working almost every day or at least weekly. Do these kinds of people then have any sort of defense to say, you know, hey, it's your error, not mine. I relied on this money. Right. So PUA is very, very specific, unlike regular unemployment insurance. And PUA has no waiver provisions for overpayments, none whatsoever. Whereas we're regular unemployment insurance, there's a lot of different provisions that allow us to either waive the overpayment depending on fault or no fault. Not your fault, but still your debt. You know, I'll do what I have to do. I have no choice, but I guess, you know, as long as they're willing to work with us, whoever owes them money at this point. You know, we're not actively pursuing collection. Notices have not been mailed out to ask claimants to pay, but they're seeing it on their account. The state says they don't have a grand total yet of poor disqualified money they expect back. Payments have just stopped for some. Others are still in determination limbo. And still others, such as those told to move to unemployment, have to beware a double payment pitfall. So on some of them, we've been telling them, maybe you should kind of hold on to some of that money you know, that second bucket that we paid you so that you could pay back what you were overpaid because you're not due both sides. Gina Mangieri, KH12 News, always investigating.